The historical cemeteries of Quebec's eastern townships bear witness to over 200 years of human tragedy and triumph. Well, most of the headstones in these places do little to address the anonymity of ancestors long forgotten. Every so often, there is one descriptive enough to bring the past to light. My name is Grant Myers, and I'm here with you today on behalf of the Quebec Anglophone Heritage Network. The Rose Cemetery, a few kilometres from the border town of Stansted, Quebec, contains a very special headstone. American Eliezer Albee, aged 79 years, was buried here on August 28, 1864, and left this message for posterity. He went into voluntary banishment from his beloved native country during the reign of terror in the third year of the misrule of Abraham I. The Abraham referenced on the headstone is Abraham Lincoln, hero of the American Civil War and emancipator of over four million enslaved people. Mr. Albee left the United States at the height of the Civil War because he disagreed with Lincoln and the prosecution of the war. Leeser Albee was born into an old New England family in the shadow of the American Revolution on June 19, 1785 in Rockingham, Vermont. His was the first generation born into the optimism and promise of an independent nation, free of the constraints of colonial rule. Throughout his life, Eliezer was active politically, first in his town and later as a representative to the state legislature. Indeed, he is recognized as one of the architects of the Constitution of Vermont. What the historical record also tells us is, is that throughout his life, Mr. Albee was deeply committed to a vision of America that favored the primacy of state authority and a limited role for the federal government in the lives of citizens. This view stood opposed to another school of American political thought that suggested that a strong central government was the only way to protect the interests of the fledgling republic. When the first shots of the American Civil War were fired at Fort Sumter on April 11, 1861, Americans in both the North and the South lined up along these competing views of the nation's future. Many Northerners, like Eliezer Albee, believed that the federal prosecution of the war was unjust and contravened the constitutional rights of the states to self-determination. Those that shared Eliezer's views were called copperheads, after the poisonous snake native to the southeastern United States. During the war, like many northern states, Vermont was firmly Republican and stood by Lincoln in the war. In the newspapers of the day, Copperheads and Copperhead sympathizers were reviled and branded as traitors, and there was likely nowhere to hide. This was an era when one's political affiliation and one's vote was a matter of public record. While it is uncertain whether Eliezer feared violence from his neighbours or imprisonment from the federal authorities, or both, what is clear is that life in the United States had become unbearable. Mr. Albee arrived in Canada in the winter or spring of 1864. Certainly the decision to exile in Stansted County was made because he had family here. His older sister Sarah and her husband Timothy Rose had immigrated to the country more than half a century earlier and eventually settled on the land surrounding this cemetery. <laughs> when Eliezer arrived in Stansted, Sarah and Timothy were long deceased, but their son, George Henry Rose, lived on the family farm. Undoubtedly, Eliezer stayed with George in his time in Canada. Eliezer Albee never returned to the United States, dying a few short months after his arrival in Stansted. In many ways, I see Eliezer Albee as a tragic figure, an elderly, bitter and disillusioned man hanging on to a vision of America that was quickly fading away. I'll try that again. <laughs> when Timothy arrived in... No. <laughs> no. What is Timothy? Timothy. Timothy's the, Timothy's the brother-in-law. <laughs> sorry. I'm really sorry. 